Hi everyone, this is Mike at Brash Monkey, and this tutorial is going to quickly cover how to support the Spriter feature called Character Maps in Construct 2. Just a heads up, this tutorial is to sort of explain the concepts and the general use. It is not a step-by-step -step tutorial for implementing character customizing in your game, but hopefully it'll cover the basic information you need to get started with such a thing on your own. So as you can see here, I have a Spider character animation playing in this uh, small program that I made with Construct2. And I use these drag down menus so that the user can change the, uh, the head or the shirt or the pants. And then they can actually save their configuration. So now let me put it back to all the gray stuff. And then if I click the load button, it'll bring back the configuration I just made. In this case, they're only recolorings of the original gray images, but that was just for the sake of making this tutorial very quickly. Uh, these could be complete and total repaints, completely different looking images replacing each of the uh, body parts in the head. So keep that in mind. This is not just for color changes. This is the exact sort of feature you would want to use uh, when you have a character that collects new armor, new weapons, or in, in, for any other reason drastically changes appearance over the course of a game. Or, like in the case of this uh, tutorial here, what if you want to give the users the opportunity to uh, customize their, the appearance of their character? So let's quickly take a look in Spriter. So here's the Spriter file I made. One second, it's loading on my other screen. There we go. So here's the actual animated character. And if you have Spriter Pro, if you click on this little Character Maps tab, it'll bring up a little window for you to create or edit character maps. And we'll take a look at this blue head uh, character map, for example. When I drag it into active, you'll see it uh, take effect here. And if I double click um, on any particular character map, I can edit. And you'll see it has all of the subfolders listed. So I would start here to create a character map. And you'll see every image in the head folder I'm replacing with an equivalent image, in this case with the same exact name and same size. Um, as the original. That doesn't have to be the case, but it makes things very quick and easy and uh, very easy to keep organized. But uh, So what I did was I told Spriter for this character map I wanted to replace all of the head images with an equivalent, in this case just a recolor, but it, like I said it could be a total repaint uh, for a different looking head. So that's what character maps look like in Spriter. And then once you're done creating your character maps for your Spriter file, of course, for use with Construct2 currently, you have to make sure you save out your project as both SCML, so you choose Save Project, um, and then you would choose Save Project As, make sure you choose the same name, but then switch over to SCON and save that as well. Uh, and then you would drag that from that folder into your actual um, Construct2 um, project in the canvas here. And I always do that on a, a layout that I create and call Spriter Layout. And I create, I have that layout have its own event sheet that I usually call something like Spriter Initialize Events. These are the events that are automatically generated when you import the file. And then I make sure for all of my actual game layouts that are going to use the Spriter uh, character, what I do is I just make sure in the events that I include the event sheet for the Spriter frame and at the start of the layout I create whatever Spriter character that I'm going to be controlling or displaying. So now let's quickly review some of the first few events in this project and uh, quickly go over what they're doing. So as I mentioned, the first thing I do in the uh, frame that the player is actually going to see that allows them to customize the character. The first thing I th the first thing I need to do is create the actual spider object so the player can see it. And in this case I just happen to scale it down to 75% so it'll fit more comfortably on the screen. And then right after that, this uh, event here, what this is doing is 
always if a change was made to the character's configuration meaning which character maps are set for which body part uh, we're actually affecting which character maps are being applied to the character and so if there's several sort of stackable character maps that can be applied to the character at once then what you're going to want to do right off the bat if any change has been made to the character setup is to remove all character maps and then immediately add or append uh, the character maps that are selected. So what this happens to do, since we're using, in, in the case of my example, the list object, if any of the list objects have a selection changed, meaning that the player altered the character setup, then we're going to remove all the current character maps, and then we're going to apply the character map from the first list, apply the character map from the second list, and apply the character map from the third list. I hope that makes sense. And obviously this does not have to be changes made from lists. This can be made based on global variables that keep track on whether or not the character in your adventure game discovered a new piece of armor or a new weapon or anything like that. So the important concept here is that what you're doing if there are many different character maps that can be applied all at once, like one that affects the head and one that affects the torso and so on and so forth, what you really want to do is, once a change has been made, remove all character maps and then immediately in the next uh, actions in that single event, you want to go through and apply all of those in whatever logical order is necessary. And just so you can see what it looks like to, uh, or where you can find these features, I'll click on Add Action here, and this will pop up. And then you just choose the actual Spriter icon that represents your Spriter character. In this case, it's called Player. So I'll double click on that, and you'll see I have lots of options here. And in this case, what we want are character maps. So we go to the character map section. Here's where you find Remove All Character Maps, and here's where you find uh, append character map. Since this one doesn't have any additional options, I'll click this one because that's all you would do is click that and choose next and you'd be done. But in this case we're going to choose append character map and then this will appear and this as well. And now you're going to want to, uh, to um, apply the specific character map which is asking for the name of the character map which you will have named in Spriter. So you would just type that in, or like I said, if you were using, let's say for example you were using uh, global strings, then you could simply make sure you type in the name of the uh, global string properly, the name of the uh, character map, I should say, into the global string, and then you could simply reference through system, and then uh, it, would be, it would be in here if you had created a global string. I had not created any. Um, so in this case, let's just say yellow and done. So now you see I added this right here, Spriter character player, append character map yellow head. So that's how that works. For the case of this demo, I'm using the local storage object to actually store the um, store and load the actual um, text that represents the names of the selected uh, head, shirt, and pants character maps. Uh, I'm not going to go deeply into this. Uh, I suggest you just find the uh, appropriate manual entries or tutorials on the Scara forums uh, to learn more about how to use those, but you get the general idea. You simply save whatever changes were made. You save the names of those character maps that should apply and then you retrieve that list when you want to load the custom character that the player had created. And then these events, this just handles what happens if the player did load something, and this one uh, retrieves the item called head in local storage and applies the appropriate character maps and so on and so forth. The same thing for the pants and the shirt. And again, I'm not going to go into a high level of detail with this, I will include a link to this very demo file I made uh, so that people can study this part as well, but it, it goes beyond the scope of this general tutorial. I hope this was uh, helpful. I'll provide links to any other tutorials I think would be uh, useful. 
So thanks a lot for watching.